Today I have got a ton of examples to share with you of unique techniques with envelopes in collage art and art journaling. So what is it about envelopes that make them so interesting to work with in art? It could be that they spark our imagination and our curiosity. Where has this envelope been? Where did it travel? Who had it originally? Who sent it to who? Who were these people? What was inside, right? There's so many things that spark our imagination with envelopes. Now, using envelopes in your work can be a very versatile part of your art. The envelopes you choose, the papers that you choose to collage on top of those envelopes, all of those things can be very meaningful. Now first, to demonstrate the significance and the versatility of an envelope with collage art and art journaling, I want to do an exercise with you. So if I ask you, what does an envelope look like? What are the components of an envelope? You might say, well, there's a postage stamp on the right corner. There is the address where it's going somewhere here in the middle. The return address goes up here. And then on the back side, there would be a flap and there would be um, where the paper is folded to make the actual envelope. So now if I say, let's go ahead and recreate that. Let's create a collage where we are going to be creating an envelope just with a piece of paper. So I have a few things. I have some rubber stamps with this signature. Maybe I will start with that. This is who it's gonna go to. Just for fun, I'm gonna make up an address. I have no idea what zip code that is, but anyway. <laughs> so next, I can continue to perhaps write a return address. I could decorate the rest of the, the envelope, or I could choose a stamp, whatever kind of stamp, and then depending on what color this is, that will direct the choices that I make for, for decorating the rest of this. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to choose one of these maroon colored three cent stamps. And I'm just going to put that on there. And this already already looks like an envelope, doesn't it? Now I want to do a return address. What else? What else could I put on here that's going to make it look like an envelope? Well, I have rubber stamps. I have some of these guys. And I also have some washi tape. These ones kind of have a airmail theme to it. So let me try some of this. I will add this. This kind of has a cancellation mark and a really nice airplane on there so that would be interesting um i don't want to stick with black because i'm already using a lot of black i can use a blue perhaps because there is this dark blue in the air mail so let me try that i can take this one i think that'll be a good match let's see maybe i can make a small collage just with a few little elements. I want something that's gonna match this maroon. So let me take this little guy here. And then from here, I will take maybe some small pieces so that they're three total. I like odd numbers. Let's see. Oh, this is too similar. Let me try this one. I 
okay, I think I can work with that. I have this rubber stamp. I got this at the Michael store, I believe. Um, I've also seen it online on Amazon and I will put the link in my description box. I love this stamp. I use it all the time. It's just so versatile. I use it for so many things. So I'm going to use it here as well. There we go. Okay, so this is pretty much it. If I would like to do some distressing, I have this little tool. I could go around the edges and just kind of, you know, make it rough. I could also do a little bit of inking if I wanted to, to kind of give it a little bit more aged look. But overall, I'm happy with this. So what is the lesson I want you to take away from this? The lesson is that, number one, you don't need an envelope to create a collage that looks like an envelope that will go into a glue book, for example. The second lesson from this exercise is that the unique qualities of envelopes how things are addressed or the kind of postage stamp that you choose or the color that you choose and how the rest of the envelope is decorated with airmail elements or whatever. These qualities make them ideal for collage and for art journaling. Okay, let's get some examples of how we can use envelopes in collage art. The first example I wanna talk about is using the envelope itself as your substrate. So that is what we have going on here. This is was it originally a letter that was sent through the mail. Uh, it has a return address you can see here and the postmark along with the postage stamps. And then I just put, you know, pieces over the top. I did some rubber stamping at the very bottom. Washi tape, rubber stamping onto an old piece of paper postage stamp, so on and so forth. So this is just right on a envelope as a substrate. I don't know what I wanna do with it. I can stick it inside of a journal or something later. I could write something on the back if I wanted to or keep it as is and just leave it loose. Here I have the back of an envelope and what I did was I separated, let me show you. I had an envelope like this and I got a little pocket knife and I separated all of it, the back from the front, so that I had two separate pieces. And I used the back side as the very base. Um, well, actually the very base is a card, some kind of card stock. And then since the envelope was very thin, I, I, I glued it on and then I layered these pieces over the top. I have a really small piece of an envelope that is kind of just cut and then used inside of this eclectic page glue book. This envelope was so pretty just the way it was. I didn't want to add anything else to it. So I also just punched it and stuck it in here and then collaged on the back of it. So I just added some elements onto that as well. Next, I wanna show you when I have envelopes that have beautiful handwriting, sometimes I want to showcase just that. So I want to add other elements to the collage that are going to kind of highlight those things. Other times I want to emphasize the postage. That's what I want to stand out. Therefore, I will pick elements that are going to highlight those colors, right? Here I have this red stamp and I chose this piece so that it will complement this color and kind of highlight all of it together. Now with postage stamps, I can also add a separate postage stamp to the collage. And lo and behold, this is my stamp that I used here. I made a couple of videos on how I put this together. 
So I will put the links in the description box if you are curious to see how I did this one. Now, another cool way to use envelopes and collage is just to use the flap piece. Now this actually did come from an envelope, but how easy would this be to cut out something in this shape from, you know, an, or a larger piece and just use a portion of it round the edges to make it look like it's the flap of an envelope, right? It's the same concept as this. You don't need to actually have an envelope to create the image of what is an envelope. Another interesting part of the envelope is the inside. So I have this bag full of really pretty designs or interesting designs, and then I can use them in my collages. This one is more of a modern one here. And I have this collage here just with this little piece right here. So what I did was I took a piece of this pattern paper and then using these decorative scissors, I just cut it down. Now I can add it to a collage and it has this really pretty pattern that just tells you that it comes from an envelope. It looks like it comes from, from an envelope. Here's an example of, of an altered envelope that my friend Pamela did. She has a cutter, I guess it's a die cutting tool, big, the big shot where you, it's this metal die that you put down on the paper, run it through the machine and, and then it comes out with little designs like this. That's also a great way to make a fake postage stamp. So she added that and a bunch of stamps with rubber stamping, some splashes of paint, stickers, something cut out of a book page. Just really, really cool. Next, I wanna show you some examples of envelopes in art journals, specifically in junk journals. So this is a small junk journal that I made with an envelope already. You can see that there is, this is the shape of an envelope. And then inside I used um, envelopes that were split open and you know used as pages in my signatures. So I want to show you two examples. I have this envelope, which is a return envelope. And let me show you the other side. Here it is, you can see it. So I put it in this you know, wide way, and then I made this little slit here so that I could open the pocket and have access to it. Here's this little window, which is really nice, and I could choose what color elements I wanted to match with the collage on the other side. The other example I wanted to show you was how I did this, this is an envelope that's split open. I just took a pocket knife and opened the sides. And this is the center piece from where the pamphlet stitch gets tied. And usually what I do is I'll put double-sided tape on the top and bottom, or glue, and then you know push the pieces together so that this is a pocket and that you don't see the stitch inside. This time I kept it open just because I, you know, I wanted to, to display, put some things in, but that is an option as well and one that I do quite a lot. So in here, I have a couple of examples that I want to share. Oh, here's an example of where I did that exact thing that I just mentioned to you. The, the, the pieces of paper were folded open I did the pamphlet stitch and then I closed them and glued them so that it looks like the envelope is, is exactly as it's supposed to be and it's tied in with the signature. Okay, it doesn't come out. Now this envelope here, same thing, I did the same thing. Um, I put a piece of pattern paper in here so that it stands out in contrast to the craft paper. 
And before I glued it down, I've stuck a piece of washi tape along this seam so that when I did glue down the paper, there is that little bit of contrast. Then I took the flap and I folded it backwards on this side and I just stuck one whole piece of map right, right here. And it just kind of contrasts nicely with this craft paper. And then I just had a very simple single embellishment over here. So there's not a whole lot of embellishing that's happening. I mean, the shape of the, of the envelope really, really stands out. And um, that's what's the cool thing about it, I think. Here's another envelope here. This one I sewed in kind of backwards and it, it is a little bit difficult to get access to whatever's inside. Um, but it was, you know, just experimenting. I, you know, maybe next time I would move it so that it would, you know, open towards the top, but, but whatever, right, whatever. It's a little bit of ribbon in there and a doily and just kind of, you know, interesting, fun layers. The, the last set of examples are in this Gentleman and Scholars book. You've seen me pull this out many times, probably. I just worked on this envelope in a previous Junk Journal January video. And this one I just collaged right over the whole thing, right? And it's loose, I have it loose in here. I don't know what I will do with it or if I'll just keep it that way. Here is again this craft envelope inside the, you know, in the binding. I turned over the flap and then I added these, um, these, this little element and this is just a single piece of pattern paper. And inside I have this uh, envelope that already had the pocket in it and it's been cut down with a little ATC inside. I also made a video about this, how I made this envelope. So you can check that out later if you are interested in that. The last example in this book I wanted to show you was this hinged washi tape. So I have washi tape at the very edge of the envelope and also on the other side. And it's two different kinds of washi tape. They're just put right on top, you know, very carefully. So ni neither side sticks out longer than the other. So you can choose what kind of washi tape you have uh, depending on what's on your page. Here I have the green because I wanted to match the green over here. But I really like this hinge idea because it's really nice when you have something interesting on both sides and that way you can display that. All right now I have a lot of art journals that are made from envelopes and turned into journals where I store the mail art that comes from exchanges that I do or swaps with friends, art friends, so on and so forth. So I want to show you inside some of these. So I have this huge one and the whole thing is made with one massive big envelope. And inside, it's just mail art that has come from, from a lot of different places and um, all over the world. So including, I have some of the post-crossing postcards and things like that. You may have seen me share this huge monster of a journal also. These are all envelopes. And sometimes I put in um, just security envelopes or, you know, things as pages so that I could add additional um, embellishments to it. But mostly they are just uh, envelopes of from, you know, mail that, that came to me from, from swaps, right? So this one I could add a little bit more, it's blank. I have a video on this one, how I put it together and 
you know, just a flip through of the whole thing. If you're curious to see that, I will put a link in the description box for it. It was really fun to put together so many layers. So this, for example, say it was an envelope that I split and opened it up. And then on the inside, I could add more envelopes in layers. So it's just a huge, you know, huge collection of, of different kinds of, of mail art. And, and sometimes I just put in postage stamps where, where there was space, um, just, just so that I could, you know, decorate it. I wanted it decorated as, as really, as heavily as I could. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is where I get my envelopes. So before I get into explaining, I would like to ask you that if you are enjoying this video and you're finding it useful, please hit the like button so that it can spread to more people who will also enjoy it. So where did I get these from? I got a lot of these from a coin shop and stamp shop that is in my local area. They uh, just have bins and boxes full of old letters and postcards that I can, you know, look through and find. But the better place, in my opinion, where to get these is at your local stamp club. Do a search online, see, look for stamp clubs in your area, and see if there are any that you can join. I belong to my local stamp club. I tell them what I want them for. If they have things that are not in good shape or not worth anything, uh, sometimes I do, they'll, they'll give it to me for free. Other times I've purchased ones at stamp shows, um, but they're usually pretty inexpensive, maybe 25 cents a piece, right? You can also get envelopes online. You can get vintage envelopes at on Etsy, on eBay. And then if you don't want to get the actual vintage envelope itself, you can do downloads. There are a lot of downloads on Etsy, for example. Now I'm showing you vintage envelopes, but don't forget that you can make your own envelopes and even send them through the mail, just like this. This is a page out of a book. I also take sometimes pages out of magazines, especially magazines with interesting covers or pretty illustrated covers. Um, those are great to use as envelopes. So what you would do is you would double-sided tape or glue the sides, of course, and then, you know, put your letter inside and then glue or tape the, the, the edge closed. And if the front is very busy and there's no place to really write clearly, you can always get a label, something like this, address put it here, same thing with another label over here, and then your postage stamp is gonna be just fine. This sheet is in an astronomy theme, so you could get a postage stamp that had a space theme, for example. And here, you know, I've got the blue going on with the label. You know, you could really do some interesting things with specific papers and then making them truly unique pieces of art that go through the mail. Envelopes with collage art and in junk journals is something I have a lot of experience with. So I'm sharing another video to give you more ideas for you to incorporate envelopes into your art.